Hello, hello. Welcome Shading Y. I'm Marilyn and today we have brooches and what we are going to do is try to go through some key points for you to be out, pick up a brooch and try to date it. What I'm going to do is just pick these up at random and see what we find. If you haven't been here before, as I said, my name is Marilyn, my husband's name is Barry, and we are resellers. We sell on multiple platforms, and it's really simple. What we do is we bring everything to you first. Um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, we upload at 10 p.m. On Fridays, we try to do mix-ups, and that is anything from unboxing beauty boxes to... Um, educational things about jewelry, um, showcases, all kinds of different things. If you um, aren't subscribed, definitely give us a try. See if you like us. And uh, let's see. I will also um, give prices on these if I can think to do it. And um, these will be invoiced the following week. So let's just give it a try. I'm also going to put um some uh links uh, or websites that you can learn dating of brooches uh that might be helpful to you okay first off let's just go for this one obviously this one is a sterling silver let's see if it's marked generally if you find a brooch that's filigree like so um, you can find the marks on the inside of the wreath. Um, this is a gorgeous um, brooch. Anytime you're seeing a filigree um, that is done really, really well. Let me see if I have one. I don't. I should bring out uh, more. But let's start with these. Um and in the comments, just let me know what you think. If you want more like this, if you'd like to see more brooch examples, just let me know. This one, okay, um, here's the back of the brooch. And anytime you pick up a brooch, the best way to um, date it is to turn it over. Um, this one is gorgeous the way the um, filigree is. But what you want to look at is the pin back that's uh, a good way of telling this pin back is extended beyond the um, pen okay that tells us that it's generally older shorter uh, pin backs tell us that it is a more recent piece and not only that but um, this is um, the clasp on this is a safety clasp. However, it goes straight in and then the roller clasp goes on top of it, the safety clasp. And this one looks like it is definitely early because of the pin bag. Let me see the most modern pen I have. I'm not one of those people who purchase a lot of modern pens. <laughs> But this one's um, pretty modern. Okay, so when I say modern, I'm going to say um, 1960s or more current. And see how this pen bag is like what we see a lot. It has the two um, pieces. You, It has the big tab. You push it over. It comes out below. Okay, so it goes down and out. Not only that, but you are going to take the um, pen class or tab, whatever you want to call it. I'm not great with um, technical names. So you just push it all the way over. That's more of a current pen bag. Not only that, but you see here, the pen bag is coiled around um, this end. So that gives you more moderns, and I would say 1950s or newer, okay? But this one, um, see how, let's do them side by side. See how the um, 
mechanism is just so well done. You just see it has the slot in it, whereas this one um, has a tendency to loosen. They're not um, like put in the same way. I am horrible at this. Maybe this wasn't the best <laughs> decision for me to show because I am horrible on words, um, but showing the difference. So on this one, I'm going to date this back probably to the 30s or 40s, um, maybe even older than that. But as you start buying brooches or looking at them, not even if you don't buy them, if you're just looking at them, if you go into a thrift store or an antique shop or a vintage shop, pick up the pieces, look at the bag, and you will start to just get the feel of the older pieces. Um, on this one, because it's sterling silver, I'm going to do um, $18. And this one is gorgeous. Blue, um, prong set, rhinestones. As I said, I mean, this is um, has a dangle that's really cool. Um, so I'm going to say that this is probably from the 60s. Um, at the most the 70s and more so today it's rare to find prongs at rhinestones but these are gorgeous um so on this one i'm gonna say ten dollars now this one's cool this one is rome a photo of rome it has gold um etching around the edges it is a ceramic piece now this is a European good example of a European piece okay probably again from the 50s Europeans used a lot of c-class a lot later than um, we do here in America so um, this is a c-class but it's not a classic Victorian c-class see it's longer more like a pen style bag and you just flip it open and there you go notice the long hinge so I'm going to say this is, as I think, probably from the 50s or 60s. Um, a cool piece, though. And on this one, I'm just going to say let's do $8. Now, this one, it's easy because it is Trafari. So you know um, how Trafari um, signs their pieces. So let me look at it closer. It says... Crown Trafari with the copyright. So that tells us that this was made probably around the late 50s, early 60s. And here is that classic with the tab. Goes all the way over to the bottom of the um, clasp. And then if you open it back up, it goes straight out. And that is the pen bag. This one... Uh, there there is well let me see closer yeah it has um a like a circular um end to it and there that let's see there there you can see that it has the um screw through it um and it's all round so that's the best way of describing um, 50, 60s, 70 pieces is that the end of the pin bag is very round. Um, and not only that, but I find that um, anything that's after 50, 60s, or 70s, the clasp um, don't stay as true. See how this one has just moved out? So let's see if there's a bend in this one. Um, there is not. So what probably needs to happen is this to be heated up a little and moved in because the pin back is too short. But if somebody's interested in it, um, let's get that back in uh, frame. There we go. Um, it is beautiful. It is two-tone with a texture and um, shiny. But I'm only going to say let's do $3 on this. Pulls back a little more there. So, but I'm just going to say $3 so, since the stem does need a little bit of work. So $3 for the Trafari. Okay, this one 
is signed also it says let's see what it says sb sterling okay this one has a bend and it is sterling so it's easier to manipulate this pin back is bent so let me take that out and see if i can move this slightly And anytime you're moving the metal, you want to heat it up with your hand, which I did do this time. Okay, but you also want to move it incredibly slow. Like, the best way of thinking about it is be slow and um, do it, but slow down. <laughs> no matter how slow you're doing it, you're not doing it slow enough. Um, this one, I'm going to say, also um, looks like it is... Um, probably from the 50s. Again, you've got that tab that goes all the way around, um, has the pin back with the screw. Um, it does have um, a little bit of the wire that extends, so that tells you that it is a little older. Also, um, sterling pins that were uh, vermeil generally were the 50s. And what I'm going to say is that these are generalities, okay? Remember, anybody can um, make jewelry today from old findings. They can take apart jewelry. They can repair jewelry. Um, a lot of designers are getting old new stock um, fasteners and bits and pieces. So just remember, um, everything I'm telling you is in general, Um because I can tell you, I picked up a mini a piece that is gorgeous and older, and they have really new uh, fittings, and you know it's an old piece that has been repaired. So on this one being sterling, there is some scratches on it. I'm gonna say just $10. Now this one, um, let's see, not signed, but I'm going to say this is um, definitely a 70s or newer. Um, it has a hat, nice um, look to it, texture, definitely a heavier pen. Um, but when you're looking at them, not only the pen backs, but look at the back of the pen. Okay, so the oldest one that we've showed so far is probably this one. And see how it is smooth? You generally don't see the textured backs until later. Or, um, yeah, I don't have any here. I'm going to pull out a few more to give you more examples. Um, but this one um, has the tab, goes all the way around to open it. There. You pull it out from the bottom, and there's your pen. So I'm going to say this is 70s or newer. Um, but really, from the 60s, um, pen packs really haven't changed. You also have a flat edge over here that's um, really um, well done. So on this one, I'm just going to say, and this is a faux pearl, I'm going to say $5 on the little hat. Now this one, let's see, is there any name here? This one has a lot of looseness in here. I'm going to tell you, the only way that I know to um, fix this is to possibly see if you can take it in here because um, it's uh, loosened up. Um, but this one is um, the same as the last one. I'm going to say it is probably from the 70s. Um, bows with different texture on it. I'm going to pinch this together um, and see if we get any um, relief from the um, loose pin bag. Don't press too much because you can easily break the piece. And undo it. Open it from the bottom. It is a lot um, less loose, but it is still loose. So I'm going to try a little lower. 
not going to do too much. There is also a bend right here um, on that. And what that's from is putting it on a coat or something um, that is thick or um, anything that's thick and it bends the post. Um, it's still a little loose, but not much. Much, much better. A lot more security in it. So on this one, I'm going to say, let's just do $4. It's pretty. Now, this one, uh, this is a good example. Here's the front. This looks sterling. Yeah, it says sterling. Um, this is one of the older ones. I would say this is from the 40s. And look how small this um, pin back is. Okay, not meaning small, um, as in the pen, but this safety clasp is small. Uh, let's look at this one. Look how fat that is, and look how small this one is. So that shows you, these are probably from the 40s that I find. Uh, nice piece. Um, let's open it. See that it is one of the modern ones. If you don't look at anything else, it looks like a C-class. If it didn't have this tab, okay, then you push down and open. This has a bend in the pin back, but it's still nice and tight. But I identify these older ones um, from the 40s that have that small little latch. Um, so on the sterling floral piece, I'm going to say, let's just do $12. This looks like a Trafari. Yes, this is a Crown Trafari with the copyright. And see again, um, it has that rounded, um, puffy little clamp clasp that tells us 50s and 60s. Um, nice tight bubble here on the end. Uh, so nice piece. There's a little bit of scratching right here. Um, some texture over here, but this is um, supposed to be shiny and smooth, but there is some scratches to it. There you see them. And on this, I'm just going to do, since it has the scratches, let's just do $4. Now, this was really, really a popular type of um, pen. And these, and I didn't know this, um, one of our uh, subscribers told me about it. This during um, the 50s, when you would, 50s and 60s, when you would go in and register for your, you know, um, wedding registry and you'd pick out a flatware set, they would give you a pen to match your set. This one says Sterling on the back. So we know this is from the 50s or 60s because of um, the fact that it is a Sterling um, spoon and that was the tradition of that time. So on this one, I'm going to say, let's do $15. Isn't that the cutest spoon? Love it. Now this one is definitely easy um, to recognize. This is a slash pen from the Victorian time later um, in the between 1850s and 1900s. Um, it is missing um, a little um, uh, flowered end right here. Um, it would have been um, put on and soldered. Um, this piece goes, um, you put your ribbon um, around your sash, your sash is the ribbon, and then you clasp it on with the uh, C clasp, which is here, um, and it just opens up. And you see, this is uh, a C clasp, um, and this is definitely a Victorian one. And um, the thick um, pen back, and it just would go in, and this would hold up against the sash or ribbon between the pen back and these little um, fangs, as I call them. And on this, um, because it is missing this piece, it has a little bit of discoloration. I'm just going to do $8 on that one. But um, lovely Victorian piece. But just remember, C-clasp um, 
and they always seem to fall, but if once you put them um, with fabric, um, it pulls that C class in tightly and you don't have to worry about it falling off. Now this one is a different one. This is a beautiful um, glass. I believe it's glass. Let's check real quick. Yes, uh, glass, uh, topaz glass. And this is beautiful in itself, brass tone. You turn it over and you have a different um, glass. This is called a trombone. And trombone um, clasp were generally, uh, I believe 1910 um, to 1930s, they were used primarily, or 1910 to 1920s. And we will be looking at some websites to be sure that I'm right with my timing. Um, so I'm just working off the cuff here. But I love these trombones because you pull this end and then it really becomes a C clasp. Okay, just you push it down and then it's out. This is the clasp that generally became the roller clasp. So this is gorgeous. I love trombones. So there you go. And on this one, I'm going to do $12. I believe we have another, let's see, what is this one? Um, I don't see the markings, but this one is from the 40s. And once again, here's the front. Okay, lots of beautiful detail in the front, but notice the back, very, very smooth. If this was a current um, brooch, it would have all kinds of design on the back. This is two-tone, but here, when we look at this clasp, it's one of the really small ones that tell us this is from the 40s, and it's that same look. And you just start to recognize it. Um, just like the last one that we saw that was from the 40s, very florals um, with um, two-tone. Let's see what, if I don't see any um, name. Also be sure, oh, right there. Be, I was just about to say, be sure to always look at the stem for a name, especially the ones that you're looking at in the 40s, um, has that sterling mark. This one says... Diana, dot, dot, dot. Let's just test this real quick and see if it is sterling. Just have a feeling because of that look, I always test the um, brooches from the 40s. Even if they don't say it, I want to test them because that was very, very popular back then. And there you go. There's your blue. So a piece that is not marked with a sterling. However, it is marked with the name Diana. And um, it has that look of the 40s. So a sterling piece. That is a really nice piece. Okay, and on this one, I'm gonna do $15. Isn't that beautiful? This one is in excellent shape and um, signed. So just look out for those small little clasps. Here is another filigree piece. This one is sweet. Uh, let's see, is this one signed? I'm not noticing it. And some of these signatures are so tiny, you miss them. So always look on the pen back itself. Um, I've seen them on the edges, on the edges here. This one, I'm going to say this filigree is from the 40s. Another one that has that um, pen back uh, clasp that is smaller. It's sterling and it goes all the way around, but it is small. And look at that backing. Isn't that interesting? So this could be from the 30s also, um, because it just has a different look the way it 
pulls out. That whole um, end mechanism is covered. So let's test this one again, because this one might be sterling um, with the filigree, I would assume it is. But that's what always gets us in trouble. <laughs> Looks like it. And there's your blue again. There you go. So on this one, I'm going to say, let's do $15. That is gorgeous. I love that bar pen. Has all three of the sterling balls with it. Has that beautiful floral look. Um, so from the 1930s or 40s. Here we have a beautiful piece. However, I... Um, yeah, this is a trombone, okay? So this is telling us um, it is, let me look at this closer. Just a beautiful piece. Unsigned, it has the trombone, 1910s, um, 1920s. Um, well done. Like I said, it is really hard, and this is generalities. I'm only going by the pen bags. Um, they're um, also what you find on the newer pieces if they uh, oftentimes say from China or um, they have a uh, designer name on them. Even the cheaper ones have um, initials and things like that. The older pieces sometimes don't have that. Um, and this one is beautiful with this beautiful overlay and then the center is raised and you can fill the rhinestones on there but again it has that trombone um open it up slide it into the c clasp and be sure to push all the way down to get it to lock in and there you go i'm gonna say 15 on that one also love that bar pen i was printing stuff the other day and let me tell you i got ink all over me so hopefully I can wash it off eventually <laughs> here is I believe another Trafari piece yeah crown Trafari with the copyright now this one is a start of the textured backs okay so that's what you're looking for that tells you a lot that most likely it is from the um, late 50s and newer, um, but this is a beautiful Trafari. In exit condition, has that um, bubble um, look to the um, clasp. Um, also thicker pens. Um, so on this one, I'm gonna say let's do $8. It's a nice Trafari piece. Now we have some shoe clips. These are cool. Um, these are signed M-U-S-I, which um, is a company that did a lot of shoe clips. And they would go like so on your shoe. Um, aren't those beautiful? These are gorgeous. Um, let's see. I don't see any missing rhinestones on these. And... Um, Shoe clips, you don't see them too often anymore, um, but uh, I would say that these are probably from the 40s. Um, this company did make them probably from all the way down to the 70s. I remember shoe clips when I was little. Um, so on these, I'm going to say $10 for the pair. And then we have, oh, this is beautiful. This is sterling silver. Let's see if there's a name. Thailand, it's from Thailand, 925 Silver Unlimited is this one's by. And it is sterling silver marcasite and it is a flower, floral, 
brooch. And this one I'm gonna say is from the 70s, okay, because um, Silver Unlimited. So it takes a lot of little pieces to get to um, where it's from. Okay, notice that Silver Unlimited wasn't, I don't believe they were from the United States, but see how big this back end is, okay? Even though this has a smaller um, end, I'm still gonna say this is probably from the 70s. Um, it has the roller clasp with the tab, uh, opens from underneath, um, so beautiful, but I'm gonna say 70s or 80s. And on this one, let's do, another clue to that is Thailand. Um, used to be, um, called a different name and my mind just went blank. It is the, I'll have to put it in because I can't remember it right off. <laughs> Everybody who went to Kristen's um, live last night that I joined her on, let me tell you, that was exhausting. Um, it was fun. I appreciate Kristen D so much. She's so um, generous with her information and um, allowing people on her channel. So I just want to say a big thank you. And I want to say a thank you to everybody who had the opportunity and time to come. Thank you so much. Um, but I am tired. My mind is blank. So I apologize. Um, but on this one, I am going to do... It's gorgeous. I'm going to say $18 on that. That is just a lovely sterling marcasite rose. Then we have another... Um, uh, spoon and this one what is on that let me look closer I don't know what that is but on the back it says fine arts sterling and then it has a number here a patent number and then here it has the actual name of the um, design of this spoon. It's Southern Colonial with a patent number. It was made by the Fine Arts Sterling Company. And this, I'm not sure what it is. This impression, it looks like maybe a vessel of some type, but that's pretty. So on this one, and I'm gonna say this is from that 50s um, as small as this is, it actually could be back to the 40s. I have to do a little bit more research on finding that patent number and then going and figuring out what the date of this is. But I'm going to guess um, 40s, 50s, 60s. And on this one, I'm going to do, um, because it has the name, let's see if this one, well, it does say it's Sterling right there. So um, let's do $15 on that one. That is beautiful. Then we have this piece. This is a Magic Clip by Coro, and I believe these came out in the 50s. And you would put it so you wouldn't stick pen uh, holes in your clothes. Um, it had a magnet, and it just went between the front and the back of your dress or shirt, and that was a magic pen. So I'm gonna guess 50s, 60s on this one, probably more toward the 60s. And on this one, let's um, just do a $6. Uh, this one's pretty. Um, no name. I'm gonna say from the 60s, that is pretty. It has um, a big um, round um, closure. Um, and I still don't see any name, um, a rhinestone. And most of the time you're going to tell rhinestones because the back is closed in. This one is prong set. And so I'm going to say 60s on this piece. And, um, it could even be the 70s. See, it's not an exact art. It's just guessing um, the styles, um, the pen backs, the um, texture of the back of the pen. All of it 
creates a timeline that we're guessing. On this one, I'm just gonna do $5. And then the rest of them are like, uh, this is Baptist pen. Um, this is United Met Brethren pen. Um, this is We'll Do It with a coat of arms. This one is God's Will Crusades. And this one is Sunday Lutheran School. Uh, a five-year pen. And then um, the backs of them, um, beautiful little pens. This one says, patented, it has one-tenth, 10 karat gold filled. And then it tells us the maker. Um, and that's the, these pens are quite collectible. That one doesn't have anything, it's a C class. But what that would tell me is that is just old um, uh, C-class, not Victorian. Okay, however, you have to remember that these pens were made for a really long time. People used um, religious pens, types of pens on their lapels. Like this one is Littles, um, and this one should be... It has Littles, Cross, and Crown. And um, again, the C-Clasp. This one has Littles, Cross, and Crown system. And it is also 10 karat gold filled. And then this one has no markings on the back at all. So this one I would say is much, much newer. I would probably, again, say um, 50s and newer because of the pen backs, um, where all these are class. And if anybody's interested in these religious pens, um, just email me and I will give you a price. So what did you think? Hopefully you learned something. As I said, hopefully the websites that I'm adding now um, will give you a little bit more information. I try... Um, to that's how I do it. I just figure what is out there, and um, the more you pick them up, the more you're handling jewelry of any kind, the more you're going to learn. And before you know it, you'll be picking up something, and it's like instantaneous. You will know exactly what your closest guesstimate can be, and you'll be surprised how quickly you learn. The Jewelry Muse has a great article on dating vintage jewelry, lots of really good photos um, and information um, that is really, really good to know. I like the close-up views and it's showing you what a teaback is. Um, really, really good information. Also showing you Edwardian hinges and exactly the trombone uh, lots of things. Also at the bottom, they're telling you about rollover clasp and on a Victorian piece showing the um, yeah. silver soldering. And that is a really, really good indication that there has been a rare, I mean, a repair. So be sure to check out the Jewelry Muse because they are really, really good. Another one would be the Spruce Crafts, which is a very good website, also has an article on how to identify and date old brunches. What I love about this article is that it shows you different examples of like sash pens, c class, um, collar pens, dress clips, the difference between dress, uh, uh, dress clips um, from the 30s and onward, uh, duets, which is a fabulous, definitely pen clips. It just goes on and on. Great website. Check it out. And the last example I'm going to give you is the Real or Repro. This is a 
good, really, really good resource to have. And um, it's from Ruby Lane. And if you just go on Ruby Lane and do some research on um, their site, they have a great research department. This one is dating brooches, brooch fasteners from 1850 to 1910. And it gives you definitions, hinges, catches. But one of the best parts of it is it actually shows you typical brooch fasteners and actually in um, a timeline, which is really great. And especially this one here, I think this is one of the best ones um, that shows you how they changed. And in 1930, that's the one that where they start coming up with that little hinge part and um, showing you tubes and all kinds of information, which is really, really good to know, especially with pictures. That is the best part. And um, so this is a really, really good resource whenever you are trying to learn. But also don't forget, be sure you go and uh, hand see and touch um, as many brooches as you can and that's really really the best way to learn so let me know if you would like this series to kind of continue as far as um, necklaces rings things like that did you enjoy this what was your opinion i'd really really love to hear from you especially anytime that i'm doing a resource or information type of video i really really would love your feedback and again if you haven't subscribed subscribe below and click your bell to the all position that way you will know anytime that we have a new video coming out Thank you, thank you, thank you for spending a little bit of your day with us. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you on the next one. Bye.